Hello and welcome back to Inter Miami Live. Hope you're all doing well today as we should be able to get through quite a few games in today's episode. Chicago up first. We played them last episode obviously and drew 0-0 which was quite disappointing. So hopefully today we get our own back and actually beat them this time around. Since you guys were last here, obviously uh, I've only simulated a few days because it's only been like four days between the two Chicago games. So there's been a few fixtures in the MLS that we haven't played in obviously but a few fixtures going on which uh, we should probably talk about a little bit and update you guys on the table because I don't think we've really properly looked at the table much. We keep reflecting on our own position, but not really how everyone else is doing. So I suppose more for my benefit than anyone else's benefit. Let's have a look at the table and see what's going on. Now, apologies for the past couple of days where there haven't really been episodes. Not my fault. It's been a fault on YouTube then where they've just not been able to process videos, which is really frustrating for creators like myself. So it's, it's, I've not been purposely not uploading videos, I've just not been able to upload videos because they won't upload properly, which is just a bit weird. So you may have seen, I think on the um, playlist for this Inter Miami Live series, it said like eight videos in it, but there weren't eight videos, there were like three deleted ones because I uploaded this video, or that's yesterday's video, three times and then it failed three times, so I just sort of gave them until it started to work again sort of thing. Should be okay now because obviously this video is uploaded, hopefully that should be okay, shouldn't it I suppose. Anyway, uh, that was enough of that. Looking at the Major League Soccer table, as you can see we are in the Eastern Conference as I've probably mentioned several times. Currently we are sitting fourth in it on 20 points, however we do have a game in hand on both New York sides, so should we win our game against Chicago today we will go ahead of both of them and then depending on how well DC United do we could go ahead of them and go back on top of our conference which is fantastic stuff the Western Conference though the teams who are on top of that are a little bit better perhaps that perhaps they are dominating the teams in their conference a little bit more because Galaxy on 27 points Houston on 23 points Real Salt Lake City on 22 points and San Jose on 22 points and even Portland on 21 points all ahead of us in the Supporters Shield so actually in the Supporters Shield if we can find that somewhere supporters shield here we're only a ninth in that table which doesn't look so good does it but when you consider that we do have games in hand on most of the teams ahead of us houston and san jose actually have games in hand on us very weird how this seems to play out because some teams have played 13 games some teams have only played 10 not quite sure why they didn't just do a saturday saturday sort of schedule where everyone plays i presume somewhere actually thinking about it that houston might have have they got international, European, not European, North American fixtures? They don't, so I'm not quite sure. No continental fixture for them, so I'm not quite sure why they've only played 10 and Galaxy have played 13. It doesn't make too much sense to me because there are equal number of teams, 13 teams in each conference, 26 teams, and even number, so we can get a game every single week for every team. It's not like there's an odd number of teams. So if someone knows why there's such disparity, let me know. Perhaps there's international duty. I don't know if that counts towards anything. If someone knows, please do let me know because that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's the table, how it stands right now. Of course, we're more interested in the Eastern Conference uh, at the moment because we want to be in that top seven for the playoffs come the end of the season. Also, our uh, head physio, Tobias Kunz, he is, well, he's busy at the moment with a few injuries that we need to have a quick look at and just remind you guys of, unfortunately, I suppose, uh, current injuries. Now, the big injury, of course, that we sustained last episode. Now, I've been saying his name Lee Nguyen or Guwin or something like that. Uh, apparently, that is just wrong. Uh, it's Vietnamese, and apparently, it's a very weird pronunciation for Vietnamese to English. So, it is just Lee Win, apparently. That's essentially how it's pronounced, even though it looks nothing like Win, at least in an English sense. Obviously, he broke his ankle last time out, so he's out for a good five months or so, unfortunately. He's out with a specialist. Uh, Jay Chapman, who is a player that we aren't really planning on using too much. He's a backup centre midfielder, but he has fractured his ankle. Yeah, fractured his lower leg even, so he's been out for quite some time, uh, even before the season started. So he's been out a long time. That's why you've never seen him. Unfortunately as well, Will Trapp and Figal have got knocks at the moment, which means they are going to be sitting out today's game against Chicago, but should be back for the later games as well. So our head physio, Tobias Kunz, is really cutting himself out. Got a lot of work to do to try and sort these players out. Of course, if you want to have your name in the game, obviously we normally do it with regions, but because we're doing one season with this, it's all staff members as well. So if you're on the Patreon already and you've not got a staff member, please do let me know what staff role you want to have and we can get you in the game. And also, if you just want to have a staff member in the game, you're not on the Patreon yet already, go and check out the Patreon because there's a lot of good stuff on there, which I think you might quite enjoy. Anyway, jumping a bit further into today's game, we've looked at the table, we've looked at the injuries. I think it's time to go into today's first game against Chicago Fire. Now, of course, we drew nil-nil with them last time. The form hasn't been brilliant recently, not picking up many wins, plenty of draws. And of course, our first loss of the season against Montreal Impact was quite frustrating too. However, 
This is the team that I think should be able to do it today. Uh, Robles, which I've been saying completely wrong, apparently. According to you guys, it's Robles or Robles. Ro Robles, I think. We'll go with Robles because that sounds quite cool. So he's starting in goal for us today with a slightly different back line today. Sweat Long and Powell are there as per usual, but Lillard comes in today because, of course, Fagal has got his injury. So Lillard playing very well. Uh, Aloha and Heidman in that middle partnership today in the central midfield. And we've got a bit of a new look attacking midfield. I was looking at some players and I thought... This works out a little bit because, of course, we have lost Win. He's a big loss for a good few months, which means that Pizarro has to come into the middle of the pitch. He's going to play there. We're going to start Lewis Morgan on that left-hand side today and then Agadello on the right-hand side. Now, he's our top scorer so far this season, but apparently, if you look at his reports and look at him playing in that right-wing position, he's actually apparently the best right-winger we've got in the squad. So we're going to give him a chance today to see what he can do on that right-hand side of the pitch. Uh, we'll get him playing as a winger instead on... Let's put him on attack, shall we? Let's put him on attack. Let's put this up to positive. Uh, Morgan wants to be a winger on support. Let's put him on support instead. Uh, that works out well for me, I think. We'll get that attack down that right-hand side. Maybe that might work out quite nicely. We'll try it anyway, see what happens, submit that team, and go and take on Chicago Fire today, which I think should be a good win for us. Obviously, we had the draw last time, but we've reflected on that. They're still playing ridiculously defensive, of course, like they did last episode, which was really annoying. But I suppose what we've got to do is try and work hard and just break down that defence. We can do it. We might put some more attacking roles on there a little bit as well. Uh, the journalist has got no face. He's got a nice head of hair, but no face, which is weird. Uh, your team selection has offered little, by the way, surprises. Are you confident ahead of kickoff today? Uh, I'll make a slight favourite, so we can't be sure. Or just say that to be, to be kind. Are you hopeful that Alves Powell carries on his recent good form? He's been playing fantastically. Hopefully he keeps that up. Uh, Diego Palacios is out due to that recent... Is that due to his recent injury problem? He's, of course, the left back. He's just actually come back from injury. Um, he's just being rested. It's more than that. So he's not quite fit enough to play. Is he on the, I don't think he's even on the bench today. I don't think so. Uh, he's not quite fit enough yet. He's only just come back from that injury that we saw a couple episodes ago. Robles on the ball. Back out to Lillard then to start the game off as uh, we look to try and get an early goal. An early goal would be fantastic. It would really cement ourselves, I think, and give us the confidence to go forward in today's game. Lewis Morgan on the ball with Scottish International, back out towards Ben Sweat, in towards Pizarro, playing a slightly more central role today, as Heidman gets it through to Lewis Morgan, who puts it in the back of the net. Suspicions of offside here, though. Going to VAR, and I think... The referee has taken it away from us. I wasn't too sure about the offside there. It was a great little move from us, though. Nice bit of passing play. So if we can continue with that, that would be fantastic. Also, what I've just noticed as well, we'll look at it in just a moment's time, the temperature. It is hot today. Now, the MLS in America is a summer sport, which seems a little bit odd to me, but I suppose a lot of the teams that play in the MLS the winter is worse than the summer. So I guess that kind of makes sense as Ben Sweat on the ball, putting the cross in towards Pizarro, who shoots from distance. And what a fantastic goal that is from Rodolfo Pizarro. We'll take that. Why couldn't you do that in the last game against Chicago? I don't know. But we go 1-0 up against the fire, which is nice to see. Aloha got the ball out towards Ben Sweat, who just plays it back across in towards Pizarro, who just shoots first time. And it, it's not that spectacular. It's sort of just rolls through players really it doesn't really do anything special as i was saying though 24 degrees celsius at the moment and we're in this is may may maybe so not quite the, the peak of summer yet we've still got june july august to go and they're the hottest months aren't they uh we're in april it's not even may it's april so it's gonna get really hot for miami players this season and every season. So I'm a little bit concerned about that and the longevity of how well Miami could do. Their, their summer part of the season could be ruined because they're just playing in the heat all the time. And, but maybe they'll get used to it and the other teams that come to them will be in a, a disadvantage because they're not used to playing in the heat. I don't know. But it just seems a little bit strange to me how they're being forced to play through the summer sun as Agadello shot saved by the keeper. Good bit of play from us so far today. We seem to be playing a little bit better than the previous game against Chicago, creating more chances. Carranza coming close from a free kick there as well. Whilst it's on my mind as well, this video is coming out on Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, so if you're watching this as soon as this comes out and you're in the UK, you can actually watch tonight's Inter-Miami game against DC United on TV. Uh, now, I didn't realise this was even a channel, but on Sky, it's on like all, it's on Freeview as well, actually, Virgin Media, Sky, all that stuff. Uh, but Sky Channel 442, you might have to, no, 422, 
422, that's the one, yeah. So you have to Google this to find out what it is on your set box or your TV, whatever it is. But there's a channel called Free Sports TV, which I didn't know existed because we didn't have any of the Sky Sports channels at home. Um, so I never watched the sports and stuff like that until I saw that the Miami, Miami game tonight is on the channel called Free Sports TV. And I thought, well, I've not heard of that one before. Tried to see if it worked on my Sky box because, of course, we don't have Sky Sports and didn't expect it to, but it did. So you can actually watch tonight's Inter Miami game. It kicks off at 8.30 UK time, so obviously translate that to whatever time zone you're in if you can find it and whatnot but yeah in the uk if you want to watch the inter miami game tonight on tv you can do so i'll be sitting down tonight to watch inter miami versus dc united which i'm quite looking forward to uh, just notice as well i missed it obviously because i was telling you about the inter miami game live on tv tonight but chicago have had a man sent off that's very good for us as Powell gets the ball in towards Pizarro. Heidman on the ball on the edge of the area. Let's make it count. Unfortunately, a lower shot. Who's obviously usually quite good from that distance, but couldn't put that one in the back of a net there as Chicago, with one of their first chance of the game, come very close there to scoring the goal. We might make a couple of changes. What we're going to do is bring Palacios on. He's obviously come back from his injury. He's on the bench. So we'll swap him over with Ben Sweat to give him a chance to stretches legs and things like that Carranza not playing brilliantly so we'll swap him and Agadello over and then uh, Carranza will come off for Kisaveta on that right hand side of the pitch and actually Lewis Morgan's not played brilliantly either so let's give Pellegrini a go on that left hand side Kisaveta likes to being a winger on support doesn't he whereas uh, Pizarro uh, Pellegrini sorry likes to be the winger on attack so we'll swap those two roles over and see if we can get a bit more success down the left hand side of the pitch against Chicago today. Pizarro with a uh, corner, sorry, I want to say thrown. Corner. Either way, the corner goes all the way through the box. Agadella holds it down to Pellegrini, and Pellegrini grabs his first goal of the season for us. Fantastic stuff for the young Argentinian designated player. I do feel a little bit bad how he's not really getting the game time today. Like, uh, we're so far in this series, I should say, but the way we've been playing so far, we just haven't got the room to put him in the team, really. And I feel like... Into Miami, they've signed three really good left wingers. You've got Pizarro, who's nearly scoring a free kick there. You've got Pellegrini, and you've also got Lewis Morgan. They're all left wingers, and they're all really, really good. And trying to fit all of them in the team at the same time, I feel like they're going to have a tough time doing so when perhaps they should have only bought one of those players and tried to invest some money into other areas of the squad. As Aloha shoots from distance, hits the post. Calvo almost scored a known goal there. He tried to clear it, but it hit his own post and eventually got cleared as uh, we keep pressure on that Chicago Fire team. Heidman back out to Powell. Heidman into Pizarro. Kisaveta on the ball back to Pizarro. Across to Pellegrini, not quite getting there. And that's the highlights over. But I'm going to say, with 10 minutes to go, I can't see Chicago scoring. I'm not sure we're going to score another goal out there today as the clock ticks down. So a 2-0 victory over Chicago Fire is good. We temporarily go top of the Eastern Conference, which is great. I presume that DC United haven't played, though. They've not played yet. So when they play the game, I assume they'll win it as well. They'll go ahead of us, I think, on goal difference, perhaps. That might be the way it's worked out. VAR, though, is uh, seeing if it's a penalty. Penalty, apparently, for us, potentially, if the VAR says so, which would be a great way to finish off today's game against Chicago. Now then, are we actually going to score this penalty? Are we even going to get it, first of all? But are we actually going to score it? That's a different thing. Oh, it's a free kick, not a penalty. Ah, oh, well, that takes things... That's not quite as exciting, is it, as Berich is being spoken to, to the referee. Uh, is this going to be a red card? Not another red card, unfortunately. Just reprimanded, apparently, as we've got a free kick in quite a good area. Pizarro into the area I think should have tried to shoot from there really I mean why not why not we in the 90 minute of the game pretty much why not try and shoot from there and see what he can do Chicago by the way not playing with the striker right now as you can see uh, my head was slightly in the way perhaps you could probably see they weren't playing with the striker they had just a back five and then a midfield that was it so fair play they had a man injured as well right at the end so actually they went down to nine men right at in that game which is why they had no striker which is understandable but a 2-0 win over Chicago is fantastic stuff very pleased with that one hopefully DC United who do they play next they are playing against New York Red Bulls on the 15th of April that's three days time and I think we're playing uh, in 10 days time we've got quite a, quite a nice little break actually before the next game or so which is great to see
So hopefully then, we're going to be seeing DC United lose this key game here on the 15th, and then we can go and absolutely spank Toronto FC, who are one of the best teams in the MLS. They're very, very good as Rail Salt Lake have beaten LA Galaxy. Not that it matters too much to us because they're in the Western Conference, but a good little title fight there between those two, perhaps for the top of the Western Conference. San Jose is also on 25 points. So they're right in it as well. Obviously a four-horse race right now for the top of the Eastern Conference. So it's pretty tight, quite competitive stuff actually quite a lot of games going on for some reason i don't know why we're not playing but again a lot of games going on we're most interested in though the dc united new york game hopefully new york will get the win there unfortunately dc united do so they go back on top of the conference but we've got better goal why are they on top of us why is that the case because didn't we beat dc united dc United. we drew nil nil with them so why are they ahead of us? Because I just assume they have better goal difference. That's why they're always ahead of us. But no. So let's have a look at the rules here. Uh, what's the ordering of the MLS? Why why is this so, so different? Um, games, oh, league sorting rules. Games won and then goal difference. Oh, well, that's a little bit. Well, I suppose it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? They've won seven, we've won six. It kind of makes sense. It's probably a better barometer to go on than goal difference but it's just different isn't it that's i don't know actually that that might make a bit more sense than goal difference really perhaps the perhaps the americans have done something here that the europeans haven't thought of and uh it's actually maybe slightly better ordering it like that because that kind of makes sense you've won more games perhaps you should but then again you've probably lost more games haven't you at the same time because if you've got the same amount of points so they've lost three we've lost only the one game you see so Oh, maybe goal difference is better. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Sorting it on goal difference or games won. What do you think there? That's a, a good little interesting conversation, discussion we can potentially have in the comment section. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I prefer. I might just go goal difference because I feel like that can be quite exciting at the end of a season if it's coming down to goal difference only and things like that. If you're both on plus 40 goal difference... I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I've not. Just, I don't know why I'm going on about this for so long. To be fair, uh, we've got again more games being played, and we're not playing. Why aren't we playing any games? All of a sudden, everyone's played 14 games. We've only played 12 games, but that is quite good because, as you can see, if we win our game in hand now, we will go top of the conference, which is fantastic stuff. So that's that's quite positive for us. We've got a nice long break, whereas Toronto have had to play, and they've got now got a few days off before they play against us. So they will be more tired than our players. So that's a positive, maybe? I, think, I don't know. I'm not quite sure why we're not playing games and everyone else is playing games. But I'm not going to complain too much because it does mean we have a nice bit of a break, I think. Uh, LA Galaxy are coming up after Toronto as well. And they've already played 15 games this season compared to our 12. So their players are going to be knackered as well. So these two games coming up, Toronto and LA Galaxy, I feel like they are going to be really, really important games that we can get some good points in. Like if we pick up six points across these next two games i'm putting as favorites for the uh, supporter shield come the end of the season i know it's very early on in the season to be saying that but that's that's how i feel i feel like we could really seriously be putting on a bit of a challenge there as traps form apparently deserves a usa call up he's got 22 caps so obviously been a team for quite some time according to that as we enter the toronto game though uh, a few changes needed sweat apparently has got a small knock i must have missed that in the news article so we'll take him off for palacios also we want to get figal back onto the pitch as well so he can come back on for lillard swap him and long around there beautiful stuff what else do you want to change out there as well i feel like we swap pellegrini and morgan over let's let's do that attacking there and we'll put him on support instead Agadella. Actually, let's put Agadello on attack. Let's keep him on attack. Have the two wingers on attack alongside Carranza up front. We'll try this out once again with Agadello and Carranza. If it doesn't work, we'll put Agadello back up front and bring Kisveta back on that right-hand side. But I kind of want to see it work. Uh, Will Trap as well is going to... If I can... Where's he gone? I've missed click something there. Will Trap. Get back on the bench instead of Guzman and get yourself back on the pitch instead of Heidman. Do these... Mm, Let's look at it like that. Trapper's the box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. Aloha as that centre midfielder. Or does Hyben like to be a centre midfielder? They're both not. Uh, they're both okay with it. Let's leave Aloha, though, where he is. For me, then, that is the team that I think I want to put out for today's game. So let's submit that. Toronto FC, you're going down today. I'm expecting the boys 
to pick up a good victory against you lot. Hand over to the assistant manager for the team talk. I can't be asked to do it right now. Uh, having the best defensive record in the MLS, you must be looking forward to another win. I'm proud of that record and the work that's gone into it. We'll continue to work hard to keep getting better. Of course, we only lost the one game this season, so we do have a very good defensive record. I presume that also means not many goals scored against us, which is quite nice. Uh, how much of a boost is Michael Bradley's absence to your chance of winning? He's a good player, I think, actually, isn't he? Uh, any player would miss a, uh, any team would miss a player of his calibre. They've got good replacements, though, so I don't see it affecting the outcome too much. Do I say that? Or... No, let's say that, let's say that. Let's try and big up their players a little bit and just say that he's not that good. Let's try and diss him a little bit. As again, Toronto playing a fairly defensive formation. They're sitting down in 11th though in the Eastern Conference. So we should be the favourites of this one as Will Trap gets it out to a lower. Will Trap back on the ball, a lower in towards Pellegrini. Let's get the ball forward. Palacios there. Can he put a good cross into the middle? Palacios into Pellegrini who... I think just sort of missed, I don't know, he seemed to do something weird there. But Rodolfo Pizarro, whatever happens either way, puts that one into the back of the net. What a great little finish from him there. The wingers, Palacios and Pellegrini, neither of them seem to be able to control the ball properly. Like, what, what is that touch from Pellegrini? And then he sort of messes around with it. It's not a great ball from Palacios, but it bounces around the area, falls to Pizarro quite nicely. So I think we get particularly lucky with that. I don't think that was really planned out to happen like that. But we got lucky, scored the goal. We go top of the Eastern Conference again as it stands right now, of course, going ahead of DC United and New York City FC. We didn't pick up the points in their games that they played in between us and Chicago. Uh, Chicago game and the Toronto game, I should say, sorry. Uh, Palacios on the ball once again into Carranza, who I think has been particularly unlucky this season as Palacios grabs his first goal of this season. I think it's his first start, I think. I don't think we started him. I think he's always been on the bench, but his first start today and he grabs a goal for, for his troubles as well. Fantastic stuff. It's a nice goal as well, to be fair. Carranza, I say, is getting unlucky, I think, as uh, Palacios is shot from the edge of the area. Keeper should have done so much better there, but obviously I'm not going to complain about that. Carranza... I've said it three times now, has been unlucky this season. He gets in good positions. I don't know, he just seems to have defenders in the way of him all the time. So perhaps that's not unlucky, perhaps that's just poor from him. But I think he deserves a lot more goals this season. The same with Agadello. He started off this season phenomenally well, like so well. And then has just played terribly since then, pretty much. I'm not entirely sure why. As Powell in towards Pizarro, up towards Pellegrini. Pellegrini looking for his second goal, and he gets his second goal. And he is playing extraordinarily well on that left-hand side of the pitch. Much better than Pizarro when Pizarro was playing on that left-hand side. I just feel Pizarro was far too inconsistent. But the two games that Pellegrini started on the left, he scored two goals. So perhaps we keep him there for the rest of the season. And perhaps Pizarro is the player to play a bit more centrally instead of win, even though I do like win in that central position. 20 minutes into today's game against Toronto. And we're 3-0 up, which is absolutely fantastic. Really pleased with that one, I've got to say. And some great performances from the boys. As the first half ticks its way over, we're coming to half time now. 11 shots to zero. Toronto. What has happened to these guys? I feel like they are one of the best teams in the MLS. And yet, and obviously this is football manager. It's not quite reflective of real life, particularly because we did simulate a season and things happen. Obviously, it didn't happen in real life. But Toronto, I feel, have uh, been done dirty here because they're not doing particularly well at all. And they have got a team capable of doing very, very well, as far as I'm aware. They got to the... MLS Cup final last season, didn't they? In real life, that is. So uh, that's quite good. So last season, Seattle won the MLS Cup because they won the playoffs and Toronto came runners-up. However, LAFC won the Supporter Shield with a record points total. And I feel like that's quite unfair on LAFC because no one cares about the Supporter Shield. It's all about the MLS Cup. So despite across the entire season, LAFC being the best team, they didn't really get the recognition. They deserve. Sorry, I just sort of burped on you then. That's disgusting. Agadello on the ball, coming forward. Number 11 as he uh, puts the ball in towards the middle. Getting it in there. Cleared, but phew, the keeper should have collected that rather than punching it out because the lower's got a good foot on him. I keep saying this. He's not scored a goal from long distance for quite some time as Powell has picked up a knock, I've just noticed as well. Potentially, he needs to come off the pitch and be replaced with another player that's got a knock, maybe. Powell... I think we, yeah, we take him off the pitch in a moment's time just to mitigate that. We don't want uh, Tobias Kunz having to do too much work on the physio benches. Agadello out wide once again, coming forward, getting past the players there, coming centrally. I'm not quite sure he knew what he was doing there, really, as the ball forward to Pellegrini, who grabs another one, his second of the day, third of the season for him. Fantastic stuff. Powell is going to come off for De La Garza 
which is good. Uh, Palacios is looking quite tired as well. He's got to get his match sharpness up, but he's looking particularly tired. So we might... Well, he's on a 9 rating there. We'll leave him on for now. Let's leave him on the pitch for now. And uh, Agad the thing is, Carranza... Let's let's swap him over with Agadello again. Carranza will come off for, for Kiss Veta again. Let's try that once again. I'm just... As much as I want Carranza to do well, he's just not getting the goals that we need to get. And it's a shame, that, really. Agadello's very good, too. But, again, recently, he's not been the one getting the goals either. So, his position isn't really secure either. We do have another striker that I've not really tried out much. And we might look to try him against LA Galaxy, to be fair. But we do need to put out our theoretical best side against them. But, again, oh, it's difficult to know. If neither of our strikers are scoring, then... I suppose we have to try the unproven guy, don't we? To just see if he can score some goals out there. A lower on the ball, in towards Pizarro. Pellegrini back on the ball, in towards the middle there. Nice passing play, first touch football, which is really good to see. As Pizarro gets it back to a lower. Across the kiss fetter, what a ball that is. Agadello can't quite get on the end of it. Come on, lad, I want to see you add to your five-goal tally this season. He was phenomenal for the first three or four games of the season and just sort of dropped off massively as... It's an almost a very good goal for Toronto on the counter-attack there. That was a nice bit of work from them as they've picked themselves up in the second half, having a few shots and things like that. But unfortunately, they are far too behind to make any sort of impact in today's game to try and get any sort of result from it. As the clock ticks down into Miami 4, Toronto City. There's not even Toronto City, just Toronto FC. Nil. Good victory for us. Could be five goals here as Pizarro's free kick is cleared. And why is why is our number three? Palacios did nothing there. He just didn't really seem to register that there was a attack going on. He should probably get in the way of that. And if they score now, that's Palacios' fault. Robles with a good save there as well. But that should be that for us. I think they'll probably show the corner on the highlight. But I don't think it should come to anything. Should just be the closing highlight of the game. As it swung into the middle. Robles collects it. And that should be that as he clears the ball up the pitch with only 15 seconds or so to go. Two good victories today. Very pleased with that after the disappointment of last episode with a couple draws and a loss in there as well. So good to get ourselves back to winning ways as the referee blows the whistle 4-0 to us. You love to see it as we go back on top of the Eastern Conference. This into Miami side is good, isn't it? It's decent. David Beckham, you've done a very good job of picking up a decent side. Uh, we've got a game against Galaxy in four days. Powell is injured for six or seven days, so he's going to miss that LA Galaxy game, unfortunately, which is a, a big blow for us, I've got to say. That's a very, very big blow for us. LA Galaxy, though, obviously, they are one of the best sides in the other conference, so we need to get a win against them today. Really, really need to get the win against them. Are they playing today? I don't think they are, which probably makes sense because they've played more games than anyone else so far this season. So they've got a bit of a rest. They've played 16 games to our 13 games. Have they played? Did they play? I can't see them. No, fair. they didn't play, obviously, but LA Galaxy. 16 games so far compared to our 13. You'd like to think we're a little bit fitter than them because... They will be tired, but I, I don't know. You never can be quite sure on these things. Right. Uh, scouting report. Oh, I've got Chicharito. I forgot about Chicharito. And Pavon as well. These two players are so good for the MLS, Chicharito and Pavon. I'm surprised they've been able to get them, really. But I suppose that, I think they must both be designated players, I would imagine. So they're probably earning big money to the at uh, LA Galaxy, which is fair enough, I suppose. Fair enough they can get those players in. Morgan's out for two to six days with a gashed upper leg. We are getting a few injuries, to be fair. We might have to get another uh, physio in to help out with Tobias Kunz, because I think he's probably swept off his feet at the moment with all the injuries that we've been getting. Press conference, though, coming up. We'll do this one. Attend the press conference. Several of your players have spoken about the positive atmosphere in the dressing room. Do you think that's been a key factor behind your current run of form? You know what? They've been playing with freedom and confidence, Yes, it's probably had an impact. We'll say that because that will help them out a lot. Uh, are you concerned that a defeat could see morale in the squad plummet? Um, what do we say? A loss in confidence could then lead to more poor results. It's a vicious cycle. No, we, we don't want to say that. We don't want to get them down like that. What I'm going to say is, um, I don't think one loss can destroy the team's confidence. They're a close-knit bunch. We'll say that. That's quite nice, I think. Uh, are you concerned by Jario's poor form whilst on loan at Bolivar? Is he one of our players? Or something. You see one of... Ah, okay. Uh, well, I had no idea this guy was a player of ours. Um, can we recall him? He's not actually that good, to be fair. Apparently, he's on. He's got some poor form, though. Um, so, I'm not here to talk about players. I'm here to talk about players who are here and playing for the team right now. Let's just avoid that question. 
Uh, your team ranks among the best in league at retaining possession. How important has that been to you, uh, your consistently good form? Possession is a good part. I like to play possession or football in football manager. I think it works quite nicely. Um, I'm going to say any manager worth their salt needs to ensure they get plenty of possession. We'll say that. Very weird face from this particular journalist. He's a bit of a weird colour there. How important is it that players like Matthias Pellegrini are ultra consistent from one match to the next? I mean, it is important, but I wouldn't want to put the pressure on him to be that like that. What is it? He's got a balanced personality, so we can't really go either way with this too much. Uh, well, it's certainly preferable to having inconsistent players, right? We'll say that as a bit of a joke. It's a bit of a stupid question, that. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation around the future of Preki. Is he the manager? He's the manager of Sporting Kansas City. Again, I want to cause as much beef as possible. So I'm going to say, yes, sack him. There we go. That's what I'm going to say. It's a results-based business, something along those lines, I think it said. So try and get that manager sacked. That'd be quite good. As uh, everyone but us, I think, is playing to in the, the, the day before we play LA Galaxy. So again, the fixture list is a little bit strange. I suppose Saturday, Sunday is not so weird. It's like the Premier League, that isn't it? But while we've played 13 and... LA Galaxy have played 16. Again, I'm not entirely sure. And look, we've played 13. Columbus have played 17. Why is that a thing? I don't quite understand why there's such a disparity in number of fixtures played. I don't quite get it. Either way, heading into the game against Galaxy, what I want to do then is bring on Robinson. Now, we've not seen him at all, I don't think. this Has he even played a game? He's played one game off the bench. Okay. However... Carranza's not scoring, Agudelo's not scoring. Robinson, on you go. Kisteta, on you go for Agudelo. There we go. We'll make those two changes. De La Garza for Powell as well, just to have a fit player on the pitch instead. Other than that, though, Heidman on for Aloha, just to have a bit more fitness on the pitch as well. But other than that, I'm happy with that. So, let's submit the team and go and take on LA Galaxy today. Hopefully... A big win for us. That's what we're hoping for. Now, obviously, Galaxy are going to be, I would argue, perhaps the toughest test yet, maybe. I think they could be the toughest test yet because they are such a good side and consistently a very good side. Obviously, we've played DC United this season who are one of the teams against at the top of our conference. But I don't think they are usually a side that are right up there. So they've obviously had a good run of form. LA Galaxy are a lot more consistent. I feel like this is going to be a very difficult game as Long clears that free kick only as far as Traore. Heidman gets a good tackle in there and clears it, but only as far as the LA Galaxy defence as they look to bring the ball straight back to us. Although Pellegrini gets a great interception there with a bit of pace, making his way up the field, shoots, good save from the LA Galaxy keeper there. Unlucky from uh, Pellegrini not to score that one, I've got to say. But we do get the corner from it as Pizarro puts this one into the middle, cleared only as far as Trap. Back to Pizarro, Kisveta with the header, saved by Blake in goal. So a nice little bit of attacking plate from us right there. Just noticed as well the match stats. It's slightly hidden behind Toronto FC on the table there. But we've had seven shots to uh, to LA Galaxy's one right now. And Pellegrini grabs the opening goal of the game away from home at LA Galaxy. His fourth of the season. Pellegrini's had a fantastic episode today with his goals and contributions. Trapped with the ball into Pellegrini. Back to Heidman. Heidman with a nice back kill as a trap and with a great through ball through the half of the middle that splits it open. The keeper should have done better really, but Pellegrini with the goal. I'm very happy with that one. Fantastic stuff. Straight away though, there is a free kick for Galaxy. Goes wide of the post though, which is nice. So I'm pretty pleased with that one in the end. We've got a throw in though. Pizarro on the ball. He uh, gets past the defender there into Kisveta. That should have he should have took took it on himself, I think, really. Pellegrini scores, but I think it could be offside, that one, unfortunately. I think it is being given as offside. So, again, Pellegrini getting in all the right positions. Suddenly, he is playing fantastically well because we brought him off the bench a few times to Pizarro, and I don't think he really impressed off the bench. But given the opportunity to start games, he's playing phenomenally well. So I'm really pleased with that one. Well done to him as we enter halftime 1-0 up. Montreal Impact beating New York Red Bulls as well, which is actually quite handy for us because the Red Bulls are up near the top of our conference as well. So if they can keep doing that, that would be great for us. Right, second half to go. Will Trap tackled there by Christian Pavon, who makes his way forward. Chicharito waiting in the middle. Pavon taking it on himself. Shoots Robles with a good save and Trap manages to get that one clear before it goes out for a corner, which is nice. I actually can't believe it. 
the one time I've stopped talking throughout this entire episode. I'm obviously I'm presenting this like a live stream, okay? And then the one time I sort of stopped to take a breath and just sort of watch it, Galaxy have gone and scored, which is uh, quite frustrating. Literally the one time I stopped talking. I mean, you've probably heard me burp a few times in this, and I'm like, I've not. Pro I might have edited the burps out and things like that. And so now Galaxy have got a penalty. What has just happened in the part in the fast five minutes or so? Come on, Robles, make a good save here. De La Garza gave it away. Chicharito steps up, and it's never really in doubt with Chicharito on the penalty spot. He's ninth of the season, and all of a sudden the game is flipped on its head, and we're two one down to the Galaxy, which I'm uh, not too pleased about, really, considering that we have been the team on top. Most of the game, suddenly Galaxy have come straight back into it and they are now challenging us. They were terrible in the first half. Robinson, the striker that we brought on today, thinking that he could have a big impact today, has uh, not had an impact today whatsoever. So Agadello, get yourself on the pitch. We've got a bit of a striker issue that we might have to try and solve at some point later on the season in a transfer window or something like that. Kisvets is frustrated. Fagal's frustrated. Who do we br Let's bring a lower on for Heidman. He might make an impact out there, to be fair. Oh, yeah, let's just try that. Let's try. Let's put Ben Sweat on as well. He might make a difference as well. So three subs at the same time with 20 minutes to go. Let's go attacking. Uh, let's get creative out there. I believe in you, lads. I know we can do it. The thing is, if we lose the Galaxy today, right at the start of the game, if we lost the Galaxy, and I said at kickoff, like, oh, Galaxy has just scored a third. I would have said right at the start of the episode, like if we lose the Galaxy, I'm not too fussed because they are a very, very good side. But the way we played in the first half, losing this now just feels ridiculous. Who's that on the near post as well? I couldn't see who it was. I presume it's Will, not Will Trap. It's I presume it's one of our fullbacks. So words need to be had with our fullbacks there because they sh that should not have gone in the back of the net at the near post like that, which is really frustrating. Galaxy... 3-1 up against us now. Show some passion out there, lads. As We are falling apart in this game, which I'm not particularly pleased with. Long back to Robles and up towards Agadello, who wins the ball, takes it on himself. Go on, lads. Should have run a bit closer to the goal before taking the shot on. But I suppose if you don't shoot, you don't score. So he's got to have that opportunity, hasn't he? Unfortunately, our biggest loss of the season, a 3-1 loss to LA Galaxy, is... Not great, I've got to say. I'm not pleased with that one. At least Red Bulls lost their game as well. The plus side is we still have a game in hand on DC United. We win that, we go back on top of the conference as well. So it's not all doom and gloom, to be fair. We are still in a great uh, position. However, given the way we played in the first half, I'm frustrated with that one. So we're going to call it there for today's episode after the two wins and the loss to Galaxy at the end there. Uh, obviously, we'll be back tomorrow and hopefully get a good chunk of games done as well tomorrow, which will be quite good to see. Uh, coming up very soon, though, is the US Cup, which should be quite interesting. Uh, I'd like to see us go quite far in the US Cup, uh, which is a bit of a weird cup because, of course, you've got so many different leagues in America. And then all of a sudden, the US Cup seems to introduce like... Basically, every team in America is in the US Cup, I think, and a few teams in Canada as well. Uh, I don't think anyone outside of the MLS has won it, as far as I'm aware, or even got to a final by looking at it. it was Rochester got to a final in 1996. That's about it. Miami Fusion, the old Inter Miami side, got there, but they weren't. Or oh, they were MLS? I think they were MLS, actually, I think, if I remember rightly. So, only one team, two teams, three, four, okay, quite a few teams, but this predates MLS, I think. Richmond and great uh, Greek American Atlas. I think these these teams predate the MLS. Maybe I can't quite remember. Either way, it's basically dominated by MLS clubs, despite every US team being eligible to be in it. But that should be quite exciting coming up pretty soon. But we need to end today's episode. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have done, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time. Have a great one. Goodbye.